So dynamic break feature, uh, new parameter in the firmware for dynamic break. Uh, let's figure out, you know, how's it supposed to work and how does it actually work? So I have a motor here. When I spin the shaft of the motor, uh, I'm measuring the voltage between U and V. And I can see uh, if I go 1,000 RPM, I get like 60 volts. Okay, so I can generate a voltage when I spin the motor due to the motor's back EMF. Um, if I short uh, V and W together and measure with respect to, I can generate some voltage, but not as much, but it feels very sticky, like the voltage is being shorted to a winding resistance of one ohm. So if I made 50 volts and one ohm, I'd have 50 amps. So it's kind of hard to generate that much, I'd have to spin it really fast to, to burn up the motor winding or demag the motor. So shorting the motor is not always a good idea. Maybe there should be some resistance or control of the current. So we'll take a look at uh, how does the drive do dynamic braking? Um, I'm not gonna electrify myself because I've got the stow jumper removed, but uh, let's take a look at the voltage produced when the drive is disabled. Of course, when the stow jumper is removed, uh, there's no way to generate voltage because the H bridge is complete, completely removed from the processor. So there's there's no way to enable it. So turn the shaft. Uh, you're generating back EMF, but uh, we're not able to short the windings. And then if I put the stow in, the drive is disabled. Oh. Uh, that's not how dynamic brake works. Uh, while the drive is disabled, at the time of disable, if there's a voltage, it'll stop it and control the current. But after the current gets to zero, then the output stage becomes disabled again. So it's a little bit of an unusual dynamic brake, but it serves the function of stopping. So we'll take a look at how this works. So again, um, my drive is disabled. Uh, it's disabled by hardware, it's disabled by software. I can generate no current, so the amps is zero. If I remove the stow, uh, then the current is always zero. But if I'm making a move and uh, then I disable the drive in hardware, so besides the hardware input, I'm otherwise enabled. So input one is hardware disabled. Now I'm enabled and I'm able to deliver current and I'm going to enable and disable it. But so while I'm running, I'm going to hit the brake. Oh, well, that was a nice gentle brake. Uh, no, that's not the one that shorts the output. So what happened here was a control stop using the brake stop time. So I'll show that real quick. So these were configured to come to a controlled stop and then turn the brake on or heck, you could just use them to do a controlled stop. And um, what I want to do here is turn on the uh, dynamic brake feature. So I've been looking in the parameter dictionary. It's 6F, bit 3, factory reserve, dynamic brake, if set, short motor outputs when disabled. And then after the current gets to zero, uh, it's no longer shorted. So we could have been a little bit more elaborate in the description or ask for a new feature. So get from RAM 0x6f, and it's set to eight. Uh, I haven't set this in flash, so it's just a RAM thing right now, but the dynamic break is turned on. Eight decimal is, is, is that bit. And so I'm gonna start running. Amp was disabled by hardware. Enable it, start running. Ah, there you go. That was a tremendous stop there. So right when I disabled the hardware, it uh, disabled the PWM and shorted the motor windings. Uh, you can see the current here. So the velocity slows down. The current is trying to limit it to the nine amp of the drive for a second and then it would fold back to the continuous i mean and maybe that's a 15 amp motor or there's a short circuit at 15 amps maybe 18 amps 
Anyways, you can see that it's trying to control the current by shorting, but when you short a motor winding, the current will try to shoot to 150 amps, but then we, as we measure the current every 62.5 microseconds, we can fold it back. So that's what's happening here is it says, hey, whoa, measured, you know, minus, uh, minus 12 amps. So turn it off. So it starts uh, turning it off to zero and then back on again. And it's only limited by the inductance of the motor. There's a slew rate limit. So it's only possible to change the current so fast in 62 microseconds. And then it's coming to a more of a controllable area. Uh, and then this is sort of the linear range when my speed gets down to about 500 RPM. So uh, the voltage is producing a current uh, less in a limit area. Um, there's a little overshoot in velocity as it stopped and came back, so the current went the other way. Um, but what you can see if you drag the time out a little further is that once you hit uh, once you hit zero, then uh, it actually that's pretty a pretty tremendous uh, shorting of the motor windings. Yeah, once so here it's under control, and then some time out here the current gets to zero and it says, okay, no more shorting the windings together. And I can, I'm disabled and I can turn the motor shaft while I'm, while I'm disabled. And I don't, I don't feel any resistance and I don't see any actual current for the actual current zero. So this is the dynamic break. Um, I did notice that there's another parameter with a, a reserve bit. So maybe I have to ask for a new firmware feature, uh, short the motor windings after the motor stops Set this other bit. So um, what, what would that hurt? Maybe uh, it would be good for an application where I have a crane and I, I don't want it to drop quickly, short the windings and it'll, it'll drop slower. Um, so uh, that's a description and understanding of the bit, bit three uh, dynamic break feature. And thanks for watching.